Oh, yeah. oh, we got some. We got some. Oh my god! Ooh. I don't. I don't Ooh, know how to. It's funky. I used to Podcast. know how to. I'm as bad at Small tapping town. my fingers as I am whistling. Like Film I'm not ghosts. good at either one. Ooh. Small town. Film ghost. Film ghost. It's the yeah. Small town. Damn. Film one ghost. of these times I'll freestyle us an oh, opening. It's, it's gonna happen. Uh, my name's Todd Lizer. I'm Jared Rasser. And I'm Julie Furness. Welcome to Small Town Film Ghosts. I hope you enjoyed our song for this week. It was beautiful. Oh, I enjoyed it. They nice. should enjoy it because I sure did. <laughs> uh, today we're t- we're talking about two movies, uh, two two documentaries, uh, MLK FBI as well as Gordon Lightfoot Read My Mind. Gordon Lightfoot Read My Mind is still on the website, but uh, hopefully you have already seen MLK FBI because that was on the website just for three days this last weekend. Um, hopefully you listened to. Last week's episodes where, where I recommended everyone go watch that movie. Because, um, yeah, we're, we're, we're just going to get into it and sort of do a, a post, post-wash discussion of, of that movie. Yeah. Um, and also Sounds kinda, like it was very successful, yeah. run, our virtual run. So Nice. Good. Yeah. Good. Um, yeah, and we're also going to use this as an opportunity to kind of talk about documentaries in general. Um, yeah, let, 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 let's see. Let's for, for, First I'll say... Um, so the Gordon Lightfoot documentary, it's, it's been on our website for, for a little while. Um, if you have been a fan of Tin Pan in the past and you've seen movies like the Linda Ronstadt documentary or Echo in the Canyon, uh, there was also a David Crosby documentary we, we put out uh, a year or two ago. If, if, you, if you are interested in folk and rock music from the 60s, if, if that's a period of, uh, of music that you're interested in, uh, I'm, I'm I'm sure that Gordon, the, the Gordon Lightfoot documentary will will be up your alley, and again it, it's it's there to watch, and if you and if you've seen it already you'll 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 hear our discussion of it. Um, there there isn't really a lot to get into in that movie itself. It, it's a pretty straightforward film. Um, again, I, I think if it's if it's not an area that you that you have interest in already, um, I don't know if there's a particular reason to 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 seek it out, but Again, if if you've been a fan of those kinds of music documentaries in the past, I I, I highly recommend it because it's probably up your alley. Have you heard? Had you heard of Gordon Lightfoot before this film came out? I I, I had not, and I think okay. watching the movie, like there was a realization of, of oh, this guy is essentially the Bob Dylan of, of Canada, uh, right? And yeah. so I think if you're a Cana- if you're a Canadian, you definitely know his name, but I think as Americans, I I didn't know his name. I had no idea he was such a national treasure in Canada. I mean. They talk about him like he's royalty in this movie, you know. But I guess when you're the pr- most prolific Canadian singer-songwriter... So one of the things I, th- I thought was so interesting in the documentary is at one point they're talking about when Gordon Lightfoot started making music, they were like, oh, we don't really have music here. We don't have culture. We don't have movies. Why don't we? There, and, and there, there isn't like a Canadian art or a Canadian media that yeah. like is you know specifically Canadian or something like that. Yeah, they were there was like no film industry, there was no anything, and and Gordon Lightfoot was like the the toe in the water checking to see you know if Canada could make things that caught on worldwide. Well, and typically uh, Canadian you know actors and songwriters and filmmakers jump south. And they come right. to the United States. Yep. They get famous. They stay here. Mm-hmm. But they always talk about their Canadian heritage. Yeah. Okay. They're yeah. always like very Canadian when it's convenient, you know, right? right. So, um, Justin Bieber. He's Jim Carrey. Jim Carrey. Ryan Reynolds. Seth Rogen. Yeah. Um, Elliot Page. Yeah. Yeah. I. I mean, oh. I don't think I've ever seen an interview with Seth Rogen where he doesn't mention being Canadian at least once. Yeah. You know, Canadian and Jewish. You uh, know? Isn't Drake yeah. from Canada Oh, as yeah. Well? yeah. Okay. Yo, there, do, there was even a shout-out to Drake in the Gordon Lightfoot what, documentary. Yes, yeah. yes, there was. Gordon Lightfoot's driving through Toronto, and he sees a billboard of Drake. He's like, yeah, I like that guy. Yeah. You know, like, Drake's production is, like, really solid. He makes really good music. Um, I feel like sometimes when I listen to Drake, I just want to nod my head and play my guitar. I wasn't sure what accent you were doing there for a moment. Dude, I, I went into like, a couple of them. Yeah, right, yeah. Your 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 Canadian, you know, needs, needs a little work. Yeah. Right? Oh man, I'll, I'll work on it. I'll work. I'll work on it. Yeah. Um, so 
can I ask Jared a question? Um, Jared, yeah. when you were working at the Tin Can, yes, um, b back in the day, yeah, how often did you guys show music documentaries, if any? We would pr there'd probably be a new one like once a month, maybe, okay. and we would do everything we could to get our hands on them okay. because it, it almost didn't even matter what the subject was, if it was a documentary about music, we sold out okay. for show after show after show. Okay. We had one called um, Sound City. That's the Dave, Dave Grohl? Yeah, the Dave Grohl one. And um, that I, I would literally say we sold out every seat in the theater for two months. Okay. It was just the most popular music documentary. And then that with like Searching for Sugar Man, with um, Muscle Shoals, there was like six in a row where they were just packed the house. Okay. And it was always, you know, the rock documentaries tended to do a little well, a little better than Soul or something. Although 20 Feet from Stardom did really, 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 really well also. Okay. I don't know. Yeah, that, that, that was kind of a big movie in general. In a, in a yeah, movies. yeah. Searching for Sugar Man was like packed okay. for the whole time we had, okay. just nonstop. Okay. Um, but, but your your yeah. description still rings true that I think Tin Pan has continued uh, to to ha have that kind of success with music documentaries. Right. Um, yeah, we started Music Mondays uh, last summer. Okay. Um, okay. So that was kind of our night. Yeah. And uh, we even no, did the run of uh, Beatles documentaries. The Beatles documentaries. We did those every Monday. Those sold out completely because it was a series and. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, people would come in and be like, I missed the last one. Where do I get it? You know, and we um, we showed those. Uh, Linda Ronstadt, we did. Um, David Crosby. Mm -hmm. um, Echo in the Canyon, in I think, Canyon. was one of our first ones, right, uh, Todd? Was yeah, that? yeah, well, yeah. When when, when uh, we became a part of Ben Film officially, I think Echo in the Canyon, Echo in the Canyon was, was one of the first big music documentaries okay. we showed. And this really reminded me of that, um, that whole, like, California you know, thing where, you know, singers from right, like, you know, right now they're kind of reflecting on these older, you know, singers, yeah, right. folk singers and how like the California scene and all of that. And mm -hmm. this was very much like that. Um, yeah, you, you, you got to, it, it followed through Gordon Lightfoot's career and trajectory as an artist from, you know, his beginnings, his early recordings, his early success. Uh, the, the the later music he made to the influence he set on, on other artists. Um, yeah, I, I will admit, like I, I didn't know who Gordon Lightfoot was before this, and now I have a good understanding of what his career is. Um, How would you compare it to the David Crosby one, in uh, your opinion? I, I, I would say this is better than the David Crosby doc. I would say it's kind of on the same level as the Linda Ronstadt one. I think a lot of times when comparing these kinds of movies, there's there, there's a, a, a two two factors that are kind of important. One is whether your subject matter really is as fascinating, as interesting as we sometimes think of artists like this, and then whether the the documentary itself is compelling enough. Okay. And like Linda Ronson, I think, is an example of – she was just an artist that she did so much. Did everything. And her, her career is just such a compelling story that right. that carried a lot of that movie. Okay. Whereas like the David Crosby one that we showed, his story is interesting, but that movie just didn't do a very good job it, of, of – telling it yeah mm -hmm. and i just i don't i'm not a huge david crosby fan because mm -hmm. he's just kind of a jerk yeah, yeah he's, um, yeah, he's famous bit. for that but he's i mean th that, that documentary was kind of about him being kind of a jerk yeah kind of a jerk <laughs> like like the the antithesis of the kind of vibe he puts out you're more of like oh you're just a, and I almost feel like he sure. wasn't sorry for it. No. Like, it was like, know? oh, you're a dickbag rock star. Yeah. And you're and you still are. And, and you still yeah. are. And he went after, you know, Phoebe Br Bridgers. Is that her name? Oh, yeah, recently. On yeah. SNL recently, like on Twitter. And I was like, dude, I didn't like you before. Stop it. You yeah, know? yeah. He, but he, I agree with no you. I don't changing. think that documentary was well made. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Whereas I thought Linda Ronstadt, that film was well made. Yeah. It was, yeah the yeah. crowd that we had in here singing along the whole right. time. Right. They right. were yeah, it, it, loving it. It did two of those things great. Because, yeah, yeah. Ron said herself is interesting, and the movie did a great job of communicating Yes, that. it did. And it was loud, and it was wonderful. And David Crosby was like, if I have to, if I have to watch him, you know, yeah. sit and complain one more time, 
Phoebe yeah. Bridgers has more talent in one of her fingers than David Crosby has ever had or ever will have in his entire life. There, I said it. Yeah, I'm fine I said with that. it. All right. Um, it's, she's a genius. Oh yeah, I mean she. David she's, Crosby she's was right place, right time. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I, I, I like that. That's that's all I'm gonna well, say. Well, and everyone in the canyon had a broad spectrum. Totally. Yeah. 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 yeah, that, that, yeah. That was, where, it was a fascinating look because it was like we want to specifically look at these artists that were living in the canyon at this time. How did it affect the way that they made each other's music? How was it? How, how was this time and place fascinating in, in yeah in the way that all, all these artists were just like there together? Yeah, and knowing what? that the Beatles took their influence mm-hmm. on right. them, mm-hmm. I'm like, whoa, like the birds and right, you know, the, I, I, it just. See, all the documentaries that you've brought up over the last couple of minutes, the thing that makes those good music documentaries is that they have a specific story that they're telling. Yeah. Echo in the Valley hears this music that came out of the valley in this very specific period of time. Muscle Shoals hears this very specific kind of music that came out of a very specific area at a very specific time. Yeah. Sound City, this music board changed how music was made. Uh, documentaries like the David Crosby one or like the Gordon Lightfoot one in particular are more like, hey, what you got some time? Okay, let's – who do you know? You know Gordon Lightfoot. Okay, let's – can we just start filming Gordon Lightfoot for, for like – let's get like a couple hundred hours of footage yeah. of Gordon Lightfoot yeah. and then let's see if we can make a movie with that footage. There's no thematic – tie right. to anything that right, happens in this right, movie. Right. It's it's very well made. It moves. I was never really bored other than having to listen to his music which bores me inherently. But there was no point yeah. to... It, that movie is not out to win new fans of Gordon Lightfoot. This is a movie that exists for people who are fans of Gordon Lightfoot to be like yes, I'm glad I was a fan of his. Cause Someone yeah, finally nice did man. a documentary about yeah. him. Finally. Totally. Yeah. And like, yeah. I recognize too that like there the, the musicians that I like, I know that you know I'm sure in 20 or 30 years there's going to be a documentary that gets made about one of my favorite musicians, yeah. and yeah. it's not going to be for anyone else but me yeah. and people yeah. who like that person's music. In 2040, when you and I get to walk into a theater and watch a documentary about Maynard James Keenan, yep, totally, we will be like, oh my god, uh, and everybody else will be like, what are these stupid boomers doing? And we'll I be mean, like, we're not boomers, we're Generation X, man. So, like, is this a film that gets pushed around Canadian fest- film festivals, uh, theaters? Well, like, where what's does interesting, this go? W- watching the opening credits of that movie, you realize that it is produced by CBC Television, so okay. Canadian Broadcast Channel. And for, for one thing to keep in mind is that the way that uh, film and television gets funded in, in Canada is different than the U.S. The Canadian government does fund a lot of arts and a lot of film sure. and a lot of production. Mm-hmm. And so sometimes like we might, like from our American perspective, that might seem a little weird, but I think in, in Canada it, it's a very normal right. thing. Right. And so you can kind of tell that I think this movie was made almost as like a prestige television series for Canadian audiences okay. to be like broadcast on television, and then it's getting its release – Kind of just like as a indie documentary here in the U.S. Okay. Um, like I, I must think like it'd be if I don't know like HBO did a special on Bruce Springsteen or uh, Bob Dylan here in the U.S. Like that. That's what I kind of think this production is to like a Canadian. Audience. Okay, so this is not really a festival kind of film. It, I mean, I couldn't. It, it might be one of those like straddles the line. Maybe maybe okay. it still plays festivals, but also um, was was something of like a. Yeah, like a, like a, 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 pre- a prestige TV um, TV movie documentary. Okay. Hmm. okay. Yeah. I mean, it's well put together. It's well directed. I the thing I really liked probably the most. I so I've heard of Gordon Lightfoot before only because in high school I went through a bit of a folk phase nice. where I pretty much got into <laughs> any folk music I could get my hands uh, on. Of course you did. Um, and Gordon Lightfoot never did it for me, and it was because his I know this is like because there's some people that do this that I love, so it's not a good reason not to like his music that much. But I always felt like his songwriting was too much like poetry. That he he right. was just like I'm gonna write poems and I'm gonna put them to music. Right. And watching and, this movie, that's obviously what his biggest strength was. Well, yeah, and that's what made him so good is people listen to his songs and they were like, man, his songs are like poetry. And it's like, no, his songs are poetry. You're right, like, right. It's not they, like they are. They are. They are poetry. <laughs> But like as a writer, he is amazing. I just I don't 
I don't think his voice ever did anything for me. It's yeah, a he, little too thin. He after uh, watching this yeah. movie, he's fascinating as an influence on other artists. Exactly. Yeah, like, yeah, he's exactly. one of those examples of like, yeah, a, a musician who uh, obviously he did have success, but yeah. he is more remembered as an influential person right, rather right. than a, okay. a, a really big. Okay. Well, huge chunks, huge chunks of this documentary are. Watching other way more well-known artists do covers of, of, of his, his songs. music. For I mean, that's sure. a yeah. huge chunk Actually, of it. Yeah, you're right. You know? I didn't, I didn't put two and two together. Yeah, but yeah, it's, okay. It's all and, about. And yeah. a lot of those songs, you're like, where did they come from? And yeah, now, yeah. just put them together, and you're like, okay. There were four or five of those songs I heard in those covers that I was like, I had no idea mm-hmm. that was a Gordon Lightfoot. Totally. totally, I had totally. no clue. Mm-hmm. Like he could have made an amazing living just as a songwriter if he wanted to. So I have respect that he was like, no, nope, I am the front man, I am the guitar player, I am the singer, I am the songwriter, I am all these things. You yeah. Know? And he, he always pulled it off. Like, and I, that's what I loved about the, I think it was one of the final conversation or the one of the final quotes they have from him in the documentary is he says like, you know, he's like, I've lived a, I've lived a, here I'm gonna try my Canadian again. Are you ready? Good. Okay. You know, I've, uh, I really tried, I really tried to have a good life, but you know, when I think back on those last 65 years of me being a rock star uh i feel like i really hurt some people like i mm-hmm. i mean i especially women i made them feel like that 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 you know, that, that that book ended the movie yeah, yeah. And it, 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 totally like it, it was like oh is that is that the like thematic weight of the movie that this man at 80 years old is looking back on his life like you know it was fun and everything but Man, I was kind of a hoser. Well, and they all go different <laughs> places. Another documentary that we showed, um, Jared, that I don't know if you've seen, is called Once We're Brothers. And it was the I've Robbie Robertson and the band. Whoa. Yes. And, okay, talk about I'm obsessed with the band. I'm okay. obsessed and with the band. And that had moderate success. I mean, like, it sold out at first, and then it kind of fills it off. But talk about someone who mm-hmm. went on to do incredible things okay film score after film score after film i mean this guy yeah and that one was very well done i thought yeah i mean i mean that one was interesting because their concert documentary the last waltz is like usually held up as like the one of the greatest concert documentaries it's the, it's the greatest yeah, it, yeah. nobody's come close to making a concert documentary that good martin so, scorsese at what 26 years old yeah, 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 yeah. yeah it's just like oh it's your last show let me shoot you guys and, and we, no, we get to yeah. see some of it mm-hmm. in yeah, 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 Once We're in, Brothers, in, in Once right? We're Brothers, and you yeah. see, oh, wow. like, the shaky cameras, and, like, you can't figure out if there's one or two cameras in there. Oh, or, wow. Like, okay. You're, like, mm-hmm. okay. And, and Marty's, like, he's so young, and, like, it's so weird seeing him young, because I don't yeah. know still, him. Still with the big bushy eyebrows. I don't still know with him, the huge eyebrows. I don't know him as a young person, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. but yeah. that's, yeah, like, Mart- Martin Scorsese is really really in, invested in mm-hmm. music in his film oh, yeah, because totally, totally. of where that started or where he started yeah, so absolutely. Yeah, totally different i mean i don't know there's but a lot that's a, yeah. well that's a really good example that you brought up too because like his his music documentary from what two years ago the, the about uh, the bob dylan never ending tour yeah 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 like that's rolling thunder review yeah yeah that is like if if we're gonna call the last waltz the greatest music documentary of all time rolling thunder reviews the second greatest music documentary of all time like it's three hours long and yeah. i don't give too many shits about bob dylan i give a few shits but not a lot of shits. sure sure that was the most fascinating look at a man that i've always considered a cypher you know mm-hmm. i didn't know him any better by the end of the movie but i felt like i understood but his mystique your, your, yeah your eyes were still glued to the screen so glued to the screen yeah did uh was Bob Dylan influenced by Gordon, or was Gordon influenced by Bob? I mean, it seemed like they were pretty contemporary. Yeah, they contemporary. Were, yeah. So, like, I like there was one point in the Gordon Lightfoot movie where Gordon Lightfoot said that there there was a specific award. I can't remember which one it was, but like he would only accept it if Bob Dylan gave it to him on stage. Wow, like, okay. like they they had like mutual respect for each other. It seemed yeah, like that. Yeah. Because again, like it does seem like a good that. Gordon Lightfoot is analogous in Canada to Bob Dylan. One hundred percent. They, yeah, they, yeah. They, they seem like each other's. Bob each is other's ours. Mirror. Yeah, he's yeah, ours. Yeah, yeah. Step away, Barb Gordon. Is ours. <laughs> but like, like, like to, to to bring it all back though, like again, all, a lot of the movies we've been talking about, comparing this movie to, I mean, this movie falls right right in line with those those previous uh, concert documentaries, and 
uh, documentaries about the musicians from the 60s and, and through the 70s and, and that full period. Right. Um, and I like to, when we do show these films in our theater, I do like to see who comes in to watch them. And I do like totally. to talk to those people. Totally. Mm-hmm. I like to see what age group is coming in, mm-hmm. what demographic is coming in. You know, and I, I, I always want to, to engage with that, that audience, you know, and see what they think. And it's, it's one of the last movies that we showed here the first time I worked here uh, was Shut Up and Play the Hits. Yeah. And that's interesting because 75% of the music documentaries are kind of aimed at, I don't want to just say boomers, but they, but, eh. but like they're Older aimed crowd. at like, you know, people who dig music from the 60s, 70s, sure. whatever. But like, Shut Up and Play the Hits could not be more contemporary. Totally. Like, like there's a there's a three second shot of Donald Glover just dancing yeah, yeah, in the yeah, audience, yeah, 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 and you're yeah. just like, okay, this you know this movie is like about that, that movie's trying to capture it, 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 it's it's think it's I think there's an argument to be made that LCD Sound System is like one of the most important bands in the last 10, 20 years, sure, and sure. so like that movie is an attempt to be like we we think this might be the last waltz of this era, so right. let's try and do that. Right. Okay. And I think there's an argument to be made, to be made that that movie does you know compete up in that in that same ring yeah absolutely um, we did show that this summer we and did. we had it was kind of moderate success yeah right? well like, that's, a, that's what i was gonna say yeah, is we it, did. it didn't when we showed it in the theater we didn't have when it first came half out half as many people as would have came to muscle shoals right. or 20 mm-hmm. right, to start right, it right. because the music is more contemporary contemporary okay. I, I i think the 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 formula of Music documentary plus Tin Pan Theater equals butts and seats isn't like a hundred percent there because it does sure. sort of kind of depend on yeah. what okay. the this, documentary yeah. is about. But this movie, Gordon Lightfoot, I think is the is one of those yeah. ones that like it would have packed. Yeah, it would have packed the yeah. house. Right. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. So Jared, any final thoughts? I would say don't go into the Gordon Lightfoot documentary expecting it to make you a fan of Gordon Lightfoot. Go into it as a fan of Gordon Lightfoot already and being excited to learn more about him and, you know, and or, his wily Canadian ways. Or, or being a fan of this kind of music and this era of right. this period of music. Yeah, yeah. Also go into this if you like music documentaries in general and right. you're a music documentary buff. Yeah. Totally. See this film. Yeah, it's a, well, it's a very well-made documentary. Added to, it really yeah, is. There are music documentaries that are well-made like this one and there are music documentaries that are not well made yeah that's so, very true and it doesn't give the singer justice sometimes so mm-hmm. see this if you're a if you're a fan of those definitely how about you Todd? uh yeah I, I would say that this movie doesn't do anything particularly um noteworthy outside of other music documentaries mm-hmm. but i mean like it's that ken burns style kind of a, a, a filmmaking that just you know gives you the information and gives you a little insight into this artist's life and their their work mm-hmm. um and it you know it it treats the treats Gordon Lightfoot with with respect and it's it's a good overview of his, of his career. Um, yeah, so I think if you're into him already, if you're into that kind of music, I think well, I'm gonna okay. Yeah. I think I just invented while we were sitting here this very second. I think I invented a word for this genre of film. Go for it. Are you it. ready? Uh, yeah. Okay. Dry umentaries. Dry umentaries. Dry umentaries. Because it's dry. There there's there's documentaries that leave you feeling something sticky to you when you're done watching them. You feel like you either walked through you, you've that got something world. To deal with like Yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. then there's other ones it's like, oh I'm I'm glad I I, I I know more now. Yeah, but like the the Ken Burns ones, you're like, I just watched eight hours about the Civil War. I was fascinated the entire time. Mm-hmm. But I mean ultimately I was fascinated because of the information, not because of how this was put together or sure. anything like that. Yeah. All right. All right. Uh we'll be back after a little break. And we're going to talk about MLK FBI. Yup. <laughs> so, uh, Canada, eh? Uh, I'm your buddy, Todd Leiser. I'm Jared Riasic. Oh, thanks, Jared. Uh, so we just got done talking about Gordon Lightfoot. Uh, we thought we were going to talk about Gordon Lightfoot and MLK FBI together as one, but we ended up just naturally talking about the movies separately. So that made dividing this episode easily. Easily. Yay. Yeah. Um, so after the break, we're obviously going to talk about MLK FBI. Uh, this movie did already finish its very short run on our virtual theater, so you will not be able to watch it, watch the movie through us at the moment. 
So hopefully you already did, and you want to tune in for a post-watch discussion. Uh, yeah, it was a it was a very very short very short window, um, but I think we liked it. it was, yeah, it was yeah it was real good. Yeah, yeah, real good. Definitely definitely worth it. Uh, yeah, if if you want to hunt it down later, I I, I would hi- highly recommend it. Um, to give you a preview for next week, we are going to discuss the Golden Globe Awards and our reactions to the winners and the show itself. We recorded three days after the awards, but it won't air until next week. So hopefully our reactions still hold up that late. They will. They will. We're we're timeless. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, th- I think it's going to be around the same time that maybe the Oscar nominations will be announced by uh, then. So perfect. yeah, it, it'll it'll still be timeless. And we're going to go hard. Oh talking yeah. About the Oscars. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um. Let's see. Also, a reminder of the movies that you can watch on the Virtual Tin Pan site. Uh, there is still Identifying Features, which was a big hit at Sundance. I think it won the, the main audience award. Um, that movie is still available to watch. Uh, I, think, I think that movie is... Uh, I, know, I know it's a Span- Spanish language production. Uh, also, Stray is going to open up uh, this Friday, March 5th. Uh, Stray is a documentary, I think, from the same team that did Keddy, which was the... A uh, documentary with the uh, the stray cats in Istanbul. Yeah, um, and this is pretty much. One. Have you seen? I still have not seen Keddy. My my parents loved it because they lived in Turkey for several years. Oh, so man. okay, it was right up there. I'm sure I'm sure this movie will be right up there, Ali, too. Because again, yeah, but it will. Be. Th- this is about the stray dog. Keddy's right. amazing. Like it it legit lives. Like I saw it once several years ago, and I can't get it out of my head. Okay. Okay, well, I, it sounded like you were going to say you'd seen it several times, but apparently once was all I needed. Just once, and I don't need to. Okay, it's, okay. It's, 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 it's timeless. Don't we both feel bad for stray animals? Yeah, yeah, no, I, I get it. I get it. Uh, also, Jared, you're going to start your take for lecture series this Friday. That's it's correct. It's true. This yeah. Friday. Donnie uh, Darko. Yeah, what, 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 what's, what's the g- – g- g- give me the quick elevator pitch for your lecture series. Um, I think – We've become too complacent with what we like as cult films, so I've made a list of a hundred better, not better ones, just new ones. There's a hundred new cult classics, and Donnie Darko is number one on the list. Got it. I'm yeah. only gonna do four though. You don't get the whole list of a hundred. Right, right. Just, yeah. just, just the best four. Yeah, top four. Uh, yeah. So that's the that's the Take Four lecture series for the the month of March, uh, building off of what Dune did in January. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The four films are gonna be Donnie Darko, Warren Color. The Lobster and and a ghost story. A ghost story. That's yeah. The last one. Uh, cool. Yeah. And that's going to be every every Friday for the next four weeks on on our YouTube page. You can see Jared's uh, lecture series on those. And then I think we might be opening up back for movies again in April. Yeah. And we might be showing the Oscar shorts. Uh, wouldn't that be Wouldn't that be fancy? Wouldn't that be fancy? Yeah. Uh, all right, everybody. I think that's it. Uh, now you can uh, get back to the episode, and we're going to talk about MLK FBI. Enjoy. See ya. Welcome back. Welcome back. It's the podcast, podcast show that we're doing. Podcast. Talk about movies and shit. Small town. Small town. Small town. Small town. Small town. Nice. That was a little jazzy, guys. Oh, yeah. We're keeping it jazzy. Yeah. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back. Hey, what's your name? Oh, my name's Todd Lizer. Hey, what's your name? Hey, what's your name? I'm Jared Rasek. I'm Jared Rasek. Ah, uh, yo, you're not... <laughs> I'm Julie Furtis. Yeah, we're the Small Town Film Ghosts. Small Town Film Ghosts, and uh, we're now moving on to our discussion about MLK FBI. Uh, like we said earlier, hopefully you've already seen this movie since it played over the weekend mm-hmm. uh, on on the Eventive on the on the Tin Band Virtual site. Um, I mean, th- this this movie's getting a lot a, a lot of press, and I, I think it's it's still available to watch in other places if you haven't got to it. Mm-hmm. Um, but we are also hosting on our website a Q&A with the director, Sam Pollard, um, that can be watched at, at, at any time that, uh, that, 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 that you want to get to it. Um, but yeah, I think yeah, this, this movie's been, been talked about a, about a lot. I, I feel like, I, I'm pretty sure this movie is, I haven't seen anything specific, but I think it's like in the running for um, documentary categories for like the, the Academy Awards this year. Oh, okay. like, I, I feel like okay. this is the kind of movie that's, that's going to be going to be gunning for that because it's, it's the kind of film that Definitely has a have a has a specific perspective. Mm-hmm. It it really wants to investigate that period when the FBI was uh, was was bugging Martin, Martin Luther King and the rest and the rest of the civil rights movement at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Pollard himself has been a collaborator with uh, directors like Spike Lee. Um, he's he's a, a longtime editor. Um, he's made like at least three other documentaries before this. Um, and and, and 
yeah, I think this movie has a pretty prestige quality to it. Yeah, definitely. Um, and not only is interested in investigating this period of when the FBI was was bugging MLK, but definitely this this movie has a a point of unpacking why it was happening, um, what that says about our uh, viewpoint looking back today on the FBI or, or MLK, and how it's definitely still still relatable to um, to civil rights today. Um, it, it seems like a pretty yeah. prescient movie. And yeah. I think yeah. this is, again, um, this is, a, I always feel like, is this a good time for this documentary to come out? Like, that's what I always think to myself after mm-hmm. watching right, these. Right, right, right. And, you know, the sealed information, the FBI, you know, tapes and audio and, you know, um, footage and documents are going to be released in 2027. Okay, mm-hmm. so we're six years away okay. now from from releasing this, foot, this, this information to the public, right? But mm-hmm. this, I think this is good timing because yeah. 2020... Yeah was a lot about racial injustice Mm -hmm. and FBI crack, you know, like cracks in the FBI. And, you know, I mean, distrust of the FBI, distrust. I mean, and Pollard himself, I think this, like, I would love to know how long he had been working on this. Sure. You know, to get this together. Yeah. And I I think he is due. So, so totally. Or, you know, for some, for some major recognition. Definitely, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I, I, I did hear an interview with Pollard recently on NPR where he was saying something how like growing up as a kid uh, you know, in, in the 60s and 70s, in his mind, he saw, he, he thought both Martin Luther King and the FBI were both the good guys. Mm-hmm. Like, like that was his perspective. And so it, it's only over time realizing the way that, you know, the FBI actually saw Dr. King as a threat and then, and then they saw him as a, a troublemaker, essentially, mm-hmm. that, that, that that could lead to, you know, the communist takeover of, <laughs> right, of, right. of the U.S. Right. Um, and so I, I think I, as a filmmaker, um, yeah, he, he's definitely interested in, um, yeah, again, deconstructing that idea and ma- making sure that the perspective that we look back on, on this, this history is changing over the time. Because one thing I was thinking about while watching this movie is how since um, – since Black Lives Matter has has been on the forefront of American politics the last couple of years, sometimes I will see this thing that certain pundits will do who are trying to discredit Black Lives Matter. They'll say things like, Dr. King would be disappointed in people. Sure. Like, and, mm-hmm. and so people – there are there are certain pundits who like to, to use Dr. King as kind of like a, 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 a get-out-of-jail-free card to, to think that – like the, the whitewashing of Dr. King is, right. is, is, is yeah. something that happens happens a lot, and so Absolutely. I think this this movie does a good job of like reminding people that like Martin Luther King was was a rebel. He was fighting against the system, and, and the system fought back when when he was trying to change it. Um, and, and and so yeah, the, the reminder that you know ch- change like this takes work, and it is uh, if not if not violent, it is at least. <laughs> very very challenging for for society to go through changes like that mm-hmm. and and it's a, i think it's a good reminder that um yeah to, to, to not whitewash the, the, the still history. a work in progress right. oh right. my right. god right. look where we're at right now yeah it takes a long time for passive resistance to actually take root you know and 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 change the foundations that it's you know building in i think because yeah we're, we're doing this again mm-hmm. i mean you know um Back in May, when George Floyd was killed, mm-hmm. here we go again, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and it just went on and on mm-hmm. and on. And so, I don't know, Jared. What are your first thoughts? I, you know, the thing that I respected the most about the documentary in particular was that it, I, it made me happy that the film treated us like it's a given that none of us should really think that J. Edgar Hoover was ever a good guy. Mm -hmm. There was not a moment that he did anything that wasn't self-serving. Not a moment where he didn't use his power to ruin the lives of his enemies, regardless of what they were doing or not doing. Mm -hmm. He abused his position in the FBI every single moment that he was in there. 
And this documentary doesn't try to be par- impartial about that. It's like, you know, yeah, I'm I'm sorry that you fear big bad communism. J. Edgar Hoover was a was fully against communism. So if you're really afraid of communism, then maybe J. Edgar Hoover's your hero or something. But at the end of the day, this guy sucked and he was kind of evil. Like mm-hmm. he was a mm-hmm. like if if you're if there's you know. 50 dudes that ever lived in this world that were real that you can call evil, he was one. Yeah, of them. he was one. Yeah. I was, I you was, know? one of the things I was reminded of too is I've definitely read about how J. Edgar Hoover had, for example, a vendetta against Billie Holiday because of, because like, because not, not, only, not only because she was a black woman who spoke her mind, but because she was a drug addict. And, and, and right. drug addiction was another thing that J. Edgar Hoover just like blamed people for and, 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 and just thought that all, Anyone who did drugs or had an addiction, it was their fault. Right, and like, right, right. And so, like, Hoover went after people. Like, yeah. he, he, he tried really to did. he tried to destroy Billie Holiday's he career. Did. He obviously tried to destroy MLK's career. Right, right. If, if if Hoover saw people that he thought were a threat to his America, his he America. would go after them. It was his America. Exactly. Yeah. All, exactly. I mean, from day one, exactly. it was his America, exactly. and how he was going to shape his America. Nothing got in his way. Yep. And that smirk look on his face. Mm-hmm. I just, you know, it. Men that carry, men that carry that much weakness inside of them mm. do not tolerate weakness in, in others. others. They do not tolerate nuance in others. Um, when you are fueled by that much intolerance, that much fear. And that much righteousness. And that much righteousness. Mm-hmm. Uh, there, yeah, there's, I mean, there's nobody that you won't tear down in order to, you know, profligate your bullshit. Yeah. And the, the, the way that movie, this movie betrayed, yeah, for, yeah, for example, that, that portrayal of, of Hoover, this, this movie definitely, it has a perspective from the beginning. Like the, the sound design in the movie is set up to, uh, m- make you feel certain things. The, 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 the movie no, the movie knows the tools of the documentary and uses those tools yeah. extremely well. Um, and so, like, obviously, this movie has a biased opinion because it, it it wants to remind you and convince you that that that, that the FBI was doing everything in its power to take down Mark Martin, Martin Luther King. And so, like, like, like one one thing that I thought was affected by the movie was that there are many people who are interviewed for this movie and you hear their voices but you don't see them visually as talking heads totally. until the very end. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And yeah. so most of the narration that you hear is always in conjunction with imagery, either, words. either yeah, ar- mm-hmm. archival imagery mm-hmm. or, 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 or words or graphics. Mm-hmm. Um, there's even an interesting use of uh, footage from other movies. And like, uh, yeah. it was yeah. kind of like they, they would put in like the name of the movie that it was, it yeah. was coming from. Like and, 1950s FBI movie. Totally, lots, totally. Lots of archival footage. In yeah, film, yeah, by the way. Yeah. Did it? Did the main narrator? I, I know there really wasn't a main narr- narrator, but I would say the guy who does the most talking in the mm-hmm. movie. Did he sound exactly like Patton Oswalt to you guys? You know, I, I, I now I need to go back and rewatch it because I, I, I okay. bet if you'd said that while I watched it, I would have thought that. But I thought it was until it showed his name. I was like, "What is Patton Oswalt? No, this much about." We have seen these images over and over and over again, this video footage um, of, you know, we've seen it all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. You know, Selma and these, um, like the archival films we were talking about, the way this was put together, Mm -hmm. that's Pollard's mind right there. Yeah, totally, totally. That is his mind. And so... You know, I mean, the way it was done was so, so well done, even though I've seen these images. Yeah. I've watched, you know, a ton of MLK documentaries, you know, I can. Totally. Yeah. Like, like, like one thing, and Jared, I'm, I'm going to put you on blast just a little bit. Hope you don't mind. But I remember at one point after you were done watching this movie, you said something to the effect of you, you kind of felt like if you'd read the Wikipedia entry on this period, that you kind of got the same information. Yeah. The information. Yeah, yeah, but but I yeah, but I think yeah. I, I still think there is there there is there is a lot to gain from still watching this oh, movie. Oh yeah, and, absolutely. And like like I think again to go back to that idea of educating people to rem- like to to not not remember the whitewashed history of MLK and to and to get these sort of details to remember that 
yeah, this there was struggle when people are fighting for their rights, and yeah. and, and 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 there are the, the the state can become the enemy when in in, in, in these situations. Um, yeah, yeah, and, and so the the perspective of the movie I think is very is very important. Um, and 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 Sue, so it, it's always worth mentioning that I think getting these kinds of films from black directors I think is incredibly important to yeah. to to especially as white audience members it's mm-hmm. I think it's important to get the perspective of black filmmakers and black creators mm-hmm. um it's it, in a way like 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 sometimes we talk about how we we have this uncomfortability of may, like maybe being white audience members talking about these movies but I think it's important right. for us to confront and engage with this stuff yeah, absolutely. and not try to ignore it yeah yeah that's I, I agree completely, and that's what you just said in particular. That the thing that makes MLK FBI as powerful as it is is the perspective. If if anybody else tried to put this movie together, it wouldn't have felt this way. I, I think you're right. You yeah, know? for sure. It, it just it, it it's very powerful, and especially the thing that I appreciated about the movie was that perspective because at the end of the day, they can say. I went into this movie trying to make something balanced between one, but you you know like not to be whatever, but ultimately there is no there is no positive side to what the FBI was doing. So we don't need a balanced look at this. Mm-hmm. We need to see that what they were doing was wrong, and we need to know. Yeah, and yeah. I don't want to wait six years to right. to, to right. read everything, but we yeah. have to, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah. When, but when even f- Lyndon Johnson, some of that audio was right. like really like he's right. actually saying these words like i didn't know yeah. some of those conversations he was having and it yeah. was it just seems uh, it, it just like mm-hmm. i don't know i, well, yeah, I, like the, I didn't the, like him for a little bit there, yeah you know? well that that there's one point in the movie where they're like uh the the democrats at that period told martin luther king to shut up about yep. the vietnam mm-hmm. war it's like yeah yeah uh, you know <laughs> great Good stuff, guys. There's, there's that Rage Against the Machine line I always think when they say, they said, you know, they went after King when he spoke spoke out against Vietnam. Like, yes. that's, yeah, they, yeah, that still rings true. Yeah. When he spoke out about anything, yeah, they, yeah, they mm-hmm. went after him. But yeah, there was literally a different faction to try to shut him up for everything that he tried to. Absolutely. About. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like it, 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 he Martin Luther King was the representation of in influence that could destroy white america simply like he, he he was just this this pariah or or the, the the um i remember them describing that hoover feared that uh that mlk would become a black messiah mm-hmm. yeah that yeah. was that was the yeah. fear yeah um and so like for example even though there wasn't really a connection between communism and civil rights there was still this fear of like well you know we we could see how communism might be appealing to black Americans because black Americans you know, do not have the same rights and abilities. Right. And so this, this could be a, like, and so it was, it was just, it was constructed from that idea. Like, well, communism must be appealing. And, well, and so the Levinson, right, they right. did, you know, this was heavy about Levinson as well, his advisor and him being Jewish and, you know, like, um, you know, talking about how he didn't discredit communism altogether right Right. like he there was so you know putting little things together here and then just piecing and then going you know like you said um yeah i love i love that quote i i think it was mlk on it was on one talk show i can't remember which but Mm -hmm. the the interviewer was like you know what do you think about black americans and their and their connection to the communist party and his response was like I mean, I'm pretty amazed there aren't more black communists. Yeah. You, like, like yeah. his response was kind of almost exactly what the interviewer wanted him to say, but but was worded in such a way that he couldn't really disagree with it either. He's like, "Yeah, what do you what do you want? What do you ex- what do you want right, the right. disenfranchised to do?" Like, and that's how well of a speaker he was. Yeah. Because yeah. every time a camera was in his face, every time a, a microphone was in his face. Mm-hmm. And they tried to knock him down with questions like yeah. that. He was on it. Yeah, if you, you could make if you take, disagree with something you just said thirty seconds mm-hmm. earlier without even knowing. Totally. I mean, like, did it. yeah, Martin Luther King was one of the best. Like his his grasp on rhetoric is one. It was one of the most, uh, yeah, like professional or yeah. or, or master masterful grasps on, on on rhetoric. Like he he knew that his words mattered. So Absolutely. He was very very 
very aware of of, of being um, particular with everything everything he said. Right. right. Um, and the questions that he would get too. Mm-hmm. You know. So mm-hmm. so FBI is bugging his hotel rooms and his you know when he's at a restaurant and when he's in an office right, building, right. and they are trying to quote unquote catch him in the act. Yeah. Of you know adultery, which we right. know you know he unfortunately was. Um, he was not faithful to his wife. Right, and, right, right. Um, so and the it, FBI caught on. You know, they're like, we're going to get as much footage as we can. Right. You know, and it was something uh, like they almost just like stumbled onto. Like, yeah, stumbled yeah. They onto were, they were this. For something much yeah. more insidious. Right? Yeah. Uh-huh. And w- one of the things that, that that's fascinating about the way that they then like lashed onto this was the fact that, again, through the perspective of Hoover, the idea that Martin Luther King could be someone who you know was sexually active and like you know what what was a black man who was able to have multiple partners that was almost just a direct threat to white masculinity in a lot of ways Mm -hmm. it's the idea of like 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 yeah what what white male culture had always uh vilified black uh, black americans as you know uh being sexually inept and so the, the idea that mlk could be a person who even has any sort of se- sexual life that is that, that, that he has his own agency in right. it w- was it like a direct threat True, to I didn't think about yeah, that but yeah, it was yeah. Like offensive to that like cuz I, I you know 19 you know well, 1960s like mm-hmm. Every single I'm I'm gonna say it. Every single one of those fucking FBI agents was cheating on somebody. Oh yeah, totally. You know, it's like just watch Mad Men, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just watch like, Mad Men. But it's like every everybody else's morality is a problem, mm-hmm. but not your own. Oh yeah, right? totally, like, totally. Like, just that shit drives me insane. Mm-hmm. It's like it's like I I would rather you be a scumbag than a yeah. hypocrite. Like yeah. at the end of the day, because I can see a scumbag. Totally. Hypocrites can hide from you. Totally. And like another thing the movie does to, to drive this point home is like it, it shows images from Birth of the Na- Birth of the Nation. Right, right. And like oh. if you are a film student, like that's one of those movies Absolutely. that you, you have to deal with in some way. Oh and gosh. early Disney films oh, were yeah. oh, so yeah. racist. Yeah. They're so yeah. bad. And I think like um, like like one of the ways that I think like more and more of the last ten or twenty years is there's finally a recognition that Birth of the Nation is propaganda. Sure. Absolutely. Like, like, sure. And, and like, like, like the fact that like the way that D.W. Griffith portrays black Americans in that movie is to portray them as animals, basically. Right. Like, like right, it's, right. it's it's pretty awful. And so that is still the the way that 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 American culture was trained to think of black Americans. Um, mm-hmm. Well, and, and like I, I, I don't think enough people like if you. I think people should absolutely compare Birth of a Nation to Triumph of the Will. Like, oh yeah, totally, it's totally. That, it's that same exact style of propaganda. Definitely, there's definitely. no difference to it. But somehow one of them is legit looked at as Nazi propaganda, yeah, and the other one is looked at like, oh, it's a product of its time. I know, it's yeah, like, yeah. Whatever. It's, it's it's because our entire film industry was built on like because D.W. Griffith was was one of the first filmmakers who was successful and had a grasp on the art form and right. because we know that we have to we, we we know that our industry is built on his work we have a hard time realizing like yeah but he created propaganda yeah, yeah. And so like we yeah yeah we, that, 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 that's why the industry for a long time like i feel like again it's only in the last like 10 or 20 years that film classes now pro, like you know professors are like yeah we don't have to watch this movie we can talk about why right. it was important but like right. there is no need to feel like Everyone has to see Birth of right. a Nation. And if they are watching Birth of a Nation in film schools right now, there is the the discussions are really different. Yeah, totally. yeah. I mean, because yeah, we yeah. had to watch it's it. It's not the and same. it was not the same discussion twenty years ago totally. as it is now. Okay, because yeah, they wouldn't even bring up propaganda. Mm-hmm. Yep, okay. Yep, yep. But now they have to, you know, there's there's you know there's uh, there's so much on that film that we could get into. I mean specifically for college students um, and learning filmmaking. So, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, wonderful film. Um, I think my parents would really enjoy this. Um, MLK FBI is a wonderful film. Not, not birth of the nation. Birth of the nation nation. is wonderful film. A wonderful film. Can't wait to read. Oh God. Uh, No, but my parents would love this film. Um, just, you know, historians have already seen it for sure. Um, the historians in this are great. Yeah. I mean, James I mean, Comey comes in, James Comey's and in it, yeah. ugh, it just, it's wonderful, and so educated, I learned so much, 
and um, I'm I'm just I'm ecstatic for it's yeah it's it's very good I th- I think it's it's a great movie to make a part of your diet right now absolutely yeah, like yeah. yeah like my my only complaint is only that like it's a little long that's my it's a little yeah. long but you know those documentaries they have a hard time squeezing. Uh, there was mm-hmm. probably, like you said, hundreds and hundreds of footage, of hours of footage they did not yeah. use. <laughs> so yeah, totally. it could have been longer, I'm sure. I'm sure, but they did a good job. You know, I felt like, like even the, because we all know about, you know, when he was shot at the hotel, the, hotel, mm-hmm. the footage, all of that. Like, I'm going to rewatch that tonight because I didn't get, I was distracted mm-hmm. when I was watching it the first time. I've seen this over and over it and very, over again. It very much dove into that. It really, yeah. Like it, it did. It, it, it was, it wrapped it up too quick. Yeah. It, it, it went from his speech that he gave the day before to him already being dead. Yeah. In, yeah. in like literally. I mean, in, in a way, I feel like that the, the movie did that specific because it was, it was like we want like yeah. we know this information. The they did not. They yeah. did not need to focus on his assassin because yeah. that ultimately wasn't what the story. Right, and totally. we all we all know about. Yeah, that yeah, April yeah. April fourth, nineteen yeah. sixty-eight. We all know that date. Yeah. So yeah. the light going out quick. That was a good way to end. Mm-hmm. I think it was mm-hmm. very good. Yeah, and, and and I will say, even though I complain about it being a little long, like that last. 10, 15 minutes is incredibly important because, again, once you see everyone who's interviewed on screen, you realize that, like, those last couple of questions are about, like, people just, like, dealing with this. Yeah. I mean, like, how yeah. do we how do we still reckon with this? I idea? thought the last 10 minutes of the movie were the strongest 10 yeah. minutes of the whole film, sure. to Agreed. be honest. Agreed. Like, it really brought everything together in a way that was, like, here... It, 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 it solidified exactly what story they were telling by, Definitely. by those last, yeah, those last few minutes of interviews. Definitely. great. Um, so yeah, everyone, uh, also remember that there is a Q and a that you can watch with Sam Pollard on, on our website. Um, h- highly recommend that if you, if you want to get more info about this movie. Um, yeah, I, I, I think this movie is great. Highly recommend it to, to people to watch. Um, probably, probably mm, one of the best documentaries I've ever seen about yeah. covering MLK's yeah. life. Um, and I yeah, I, IFC puts out wonderful. Documentaries. Oh yeah. Yeah. IFC is great. Yeah. yeah. Also, the uh, um, there's a ton of really good documentaries on the IFC channel that's on Amazon. Oh, cool. Uh, that's good to know. Right now, if you sign up for AMC Plus on Amazon, which is, I think is an extra seven dollars a month, you get IFC Films, you get The Sundance Now, and Shutter and okay. AMC. Okay. So you get all four channels for one. Okay. That's good. And it's it's just that it's packed with documentaries. You get ton of bbc stuff like it's it's really worth it if you're into documentaries like this and and movies that are more after making you think and feel as opposed to just shiny floaties cool yeah all right everyone thanks for listening uh again we hope you already watched this movie uh, this previous weekend but if you haven't uh we still recommend going out and 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 tracking it down and then again you can watch that q a on our website um and yeah definitely recommend it to you know anyone out there who if you think someone else is going to enjoy it, still go let them know. Um, it's an important, it's an important documentary. It's, it, really it, it, it definitely is. Um, yeah, like I said, I, I said earlier, this movie's been getting a lot of press, and I think it's well yeah. deserved. Yeah. All right, that wraps up our discussion. Yeah, it does. We're gonna see you next week. Don't know what we'll be watching just yet, but yeah, we'll no idea. Out. No idea. I hope it's, it's Saint Maud. I want to watch Saint Maud. Oh yeah, I would really like I'm to. I'm ready. Too. I'm ready for it. All right, my name's Todd Lizer. I'm Jared Rassen. I'm Julie Furness. Thanks, everybody. Love you. Bye-bye.